So as you can see, we are having there some traffic lights. We have red, we have amber, and we have green. And uh, we have all been to the roads, and we know that the red sign, it means that you should stop. And uh, driving in Kenya, uh, you know that sometimes even people disregard the red uh, light. You will see the red light, but you will still proceed. Now, and you encounter an accident or you cause an accident or something happens, you will have no one to blame because you, you overlooked the red flag. You overlooked the red light. So red lights um, are there to warn us. And, uh, and there's just to... Just to 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 demystify something, I am not saying that no that, that there's someone who is perfect. No, no one is perfect, but we are all under under construction, if I may say so. But there are some things that stand out in relationships, especially when people are starting to date. There are some things that you see in a person, and if you disregard them, uh, those things will kind of grow or they tend to mature in marriage. They do not stop. And one mistake that people sometimes um, make is they say that uh, I'm going to marry this guy, I'm going to marry this lady, and I will change them. If there is one mistake that people make is to believe and to assume that we have the power to change people. So let us not take the role of the Holy Spirit. I believe it is only God who can change someone. And I am not saying that if, if someone has a red flag or something that you don't like about them, that you should not marry them. Uh, that's not what exactly I am saying. But I am saying that uh, if, if you can't live with something that you're seeing, then you better not get into it because it's going to cause problems who combelling. So most people join relationships because they see a future together. So, and the main reason that we get into relationships is because uh, you see a future with someone. So the moment you start dating, why, why do you start dating? It is because you're seeing yourself and that other person uh, experiencing and having a great future together. So it is very important to watch out for the signs and the signals. So, and recognizing that relationships have their difficulties is crucial because ignoring some problems uh, could damage your happiness. Remember, uh, you're getting married uh, and you, you, you need to be happy. You deserve to be happy. So if, um, if you get married and you ignore the red flags, you ignore the red lights, then that is really going to damage your happiness in the future. And your happiness is very important. So do not uh, take heed. Take heed to every red flag that comes your way. I'm going to share a few red flags. And uh, they're not, okay, my list is not like exhaustive. Uh, but we have a few pointers that I'm going to point out. I have actually compiled a longer list of about 23 uh, red flags that people should consider. I will not uh, expound on all of them during this webinar, but I will share my notes with you. So kindly remember to leave your name uh, and WhatsApp number so that I can be able to share the list with you. So red flag number one, red flag number one is uh, family and friends disapprove. Family and friends disapprove. Uh, maybe you're wondering why this is coming at number one, but uh, my where I'm coming from, my context is when you're starting to date or when you're getting into a relationship, you're not doing that uh, like in a vacuum. You're not dating someone in a vacuum. And uh, I usually say this, that when you're starting to date, you, you okay, don't um, specialize fast, but socialize. As in, when you're meeting someone, you're meeting them from a place of maybe a friend or or a colleague or a, yeah that that kind of a thing and then that develops and grows uh, deeper so from that angle of friendship you also have friends and when you're starting to date in those early early days and early moments uh, and then your friends disapprove your friends tell your man hey, apo, apo metu pambao. and they're your closest friends and you and you trust them they're not being malicious if there's something if they if they point out something about the person you're dating kindly take heed Slow down, Kidogo, if you had engaged gear number five, come to gear number two or even gear number one and try to observe something because the people who are closest to you and okay, both your friends and your family members, especially if you come from a close-knit family, is that they know you well. And um, so uh, your friends and uh, your family, they're very important. So if they raise their eyebrows, if they are concerned about something, don't rush. 
don't rush take your time and uh and uh, put whatever they are raising into consideration something else another red flag to consider and to note is if the person you're dating does not want to meet with your family and they also do not want to meet with your friends that is a red flag or they don't want to introduce you to their family or to introduce you to their friends that is another red flag that you sh that you should be cautious about because uh, you know you're the only person that i love you're the you it's me that you're getting married to not my family not my friends you know we we are we are africans and we know that uh, there's no way you can marry someone at year year two and they don't have friends they don't have family uh that is a big red flag red flag number two is isolation and concealment what is isolation and concealment isolation is when uh someone is kind of isolated it's like they have put themselves in a cocoon you do not know any of their friends you do not know where they work you cannot even trace them online especially in this time and age where everyone is online they do not have any footprints online though i'm not saying that is a big thing but uh if you cannot trace someone even where even their friends you know their people you cannot trace anything about them and they don't like going to places they don't like uh visiting with you you know they just want to meet with you in private probably there's something they are concealing probably there's something they're hiding in their hearts and uh, you need to investigate up or you need to be a dci and invest investigate something so uh when someone is dating you and all they want is to spend time with you all alone without other people i think that is a big red flag that you need to to worry about another red, red flag is family pressures uh we know sometimes people get married because the family is pressurizing them they start telling you you know you have become of age girls your age already have children they're being called grandmothers you know boys your age are already fathers of three children and then you're being pressurized to get into marriage uh do not marry because you're being pressurized marry when your time is right you know uh maturity and uh, marriage it has nothing to do with age you can see a younger person getting married and they're doing okay you can see someone when you're kona miaka kiasi they are a bit advanced in years and uh they wouldn't like uh, fit well in the marriage situation because they are not mature especially uh, psychologically mature and ready for marriage so marriage has to do with um maturity and do not give in or rather it is not right i know sometimes families will pressurize us for good reasons but do not get married purely because your family has pressurized you do not get married purely because of that that is a red flag another red flag is uh, trust issues and uh, someone who is very controlling you know they say that uh trust is the currency that turns a relationship as much as uh we have kenyan shillings or dollars uh to transact with in the commerce world trust is what is the currency that is used in transacting in the relationship world but when you get people when you have people who cannot trust you and every time they want to control you they want to like they are excessively possessive uh of, of you the anyone who possess kabisa and you're not already married that is a red flag or they don't trust you at all each time they want to to like monitor you it's like they have a cctv following you they want to know who you spoke to at this minute why you spoke to so and so this long you know why you delayed at work why you use this matatu and not this other one why you like going to this cafe and not that other one as in they're just controlling you all the time they have trust issues with you and you're not married yet that is a red flag and it's going to bring problems uh in the future and then if someone keeps telling you maybe what to wear they want to control what to wear they want to control how you spend your money they want to control who your friend should be uh and and uh, and such kind of a thing that is another red flag because if someone loves you they should not be overly controlling and then they should trust you if they can't trust you there's a big problem and that is a red flag remember i'm just talking about red flags today something else is intuition or um, what you usually see especially ladies they are blessed with this it is called the sixth sense ladies have that uh, even men they have the sixth sense but maybe it's not as strong as um, for ladies so intuition is that sixth sense that speaks to you and uh, so it is that unexplainable feeling of hesitation or intuition may arise signaling potential issues in your marriage or in your relationship so when you are a bit uncomfortable when you get a bit edgy in your heart and in your spirit and you're beginning to second guess someone probably you're right 
for the reasons you're second guessing them, probably you're right. So listen to your sixth common sense. Listen to that gut feeling. And uh, what is it saying to you? Listen to the gut feeling and uh, adhere to what it is telling you. Because... Uh, most likely, if you're second guessing someone, chances are you're not wrong. I remember, okay, when I was preparing uh, this, and especially today, I spoke to two different people, and two, okay, both of them are, um, uh, they, they are, apparently they are separated from their spouses. And one of the things I did ask them, and um, and they confirmed, is uh, um, about red flags. And then I asked them, uh, did you see any red flags when you were dating? And they said, yes, I saw the red flags, but I ignored them. So it's not that red flags are not usually there. Red flags are usually there. So do not ignore the red flags. And then later on in marriage, it's like they graduate. Whatever you had seen grows into something else, into something bigger. So if you're in your gut feeling, you're feeling something, kindly don't rush. You better take a step back and uh, see things from a different perspective. Zoom out or zoom in so that you can see clearly uh, what is at stake. Uh, something else, which is a uh, red flag number six, is uh, compromising personal values. If the person that you're seeing is making you compromise on your personal values, if the person you're seeing is making you compromise on personal values, those, thi those things that you hold dear, um, think twice. Think twice because you have values. There's a way you have been brought up. There's a way you have been schooled. There's a way you have matured to the person that you are. And then if the person you're getting into a relationship with is causing you to to compromise a lot on your values, like you're the one who always has to, to step down, to climb down that mountain, that is a red flag. Because I believe that when you're dating, you're not, okay, if you had set a certain bar, let's say maybe at K, you're not supposed to come down to D, but you're supposed to go up, maybe up to X, Y, and Z. So if uh, whatever ideals they are, whatever ideals you have, and this person is making you like stoop too low, this person is making you like uh, lower the bar, that is a red flag because if they can make you lower the bar and compromise a lot of your values now before marriage, that means even in marriage, things are going to get worse. So do not be the person that is always sacrificing. And especially ladies find themselves victim of this. Uh, okay, guys have a way of playing it on the ladies to make you feel like uh, when you sacrifice on your values, like you're submitting. But I dare say that that is wrong. Sacrificing on your values is not submission. And if someone loves you, they should love you together with your values and they should love you together with your standards if you have high standards then someone should up the game do not lower your game do not lower your game that is very important so and so as as i have said if your partner's behavior makes you uncomfortable or their values don't align with you with yours take a step back and assess the situation do not be afraid to ask for time out in a relationship F red flag number seven is a uh, poor communication. His communication is one person leaving point A, the other person is at point B, and both of you need to converge somewhere. It is not about one person staying where they are, and then the other person is the one who has to come all the way every time. So what am I saying here? That you need, okay, both of you need to sit some ground as you communicate, and uh, in case you experience some difficulty in communication, the way you call, you, 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 you pass messages the way you, you do your things. If you're experiencing some difficulties now, that is a red flag. If every time probably uh, you say something, you're misquoted or you're misunderstood, that is a red flag that you need to be cautious about. So communication is important uh, because communication is actually the bedrock of many relationships. If it goes wrong now, then it will definitely go wrong even during marriage. So work on your communication. If there are some things that you need to improve, if there are some things that you need to 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 work on yourself, kindly do that. I, I, I was listening yeah. to something earlier on today, and uh, the speaker actually it was a uh, a someone by Miles Monroe, and he was saying that um, no. prayer does not excuse ignorance. And also he said that uh, for a marriage and relationship to work, what you need more is not more prayers. Okay. It is more information and more education, and that is what we're doing here. So education and information is important. So even if your person that you're dating now... No. 
is not a very good communicator, you can help each other to be able to become good communicators in that you can tell this person, me, I like communication this way. And you can also say, me, I like it when you communicate to me in this manner. So do not leave things unattended, but help each other to grow in that area. It is a red flag, yes. But uh, if you can sense that someone is not willing to change or to learn how to communicate to you and with you, this early, that is a red flag because through communication, that is where many dreams are killed. Because, because if someone is a poor communicator, trust me, he's going to kill your dreams. He's going to kill your vision through words, through the way they communicate, and you're not going to thrive. Uh, something also closely related to that is red flag number eight. There's something that is called gaslighting. Uh, this is a vocabulary that I learned this year. I didn't know it prior. And so uh, this is the definition of gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation in which the abuser sows seeds of doubt in their victim's mind, making them question their own memory, perception, or sanity. If you're dating someone and they have a way, they manipulate you psychologically, and they make you feel like you're losing your mind. I don't know whether you have ever asked your partner, when will you think I am mad? Or am I running mad? Mbaka, you even ask yourself, am I running mad nowadays? Am I okay? Am I sober? If you're in a relationship and someone is making you uh, doubt your sanity, then that is called gaslighting. And it is a big red flag. If someone gaslights you during a courtship, then that means in marriage, unless God intervenes in a very miraculous way, uh, that is going to be a big problem because you cannot live in a in a relationship. You cannot thrive in a relationship whereby you're being manipulated every time. Psychological manipulation, psychological manipulation and being abused psychologically. These people are very good at abusing you psychologically and emotionally, by the way. They may not hit you. They may not slap you, but they are abusing you psychologically and they are manipulating you in that manner. And uh, that can be very dangerous, uh, very dangerous. So, uh, kindly, you can do a study on your own about gas gaslighting. And if you're the person who gaslights others, kindly stop doing that. Be, be careful, be kind, be generous with your words. And uh, if you're the person being gaslighted, uh, think twice. Think twice. Remember, we are talking about red flags, and a red flag is a warning sign to ask you to stop. After the red flag, agree, okay, there is amber light and then there's green light. So you will have to ask for time out and see if you cannot survive the gaslighting now. I don't think you're able to, you're, you're going to survive that in uh, in marriage. And we are told that it is, um, uh, or rather a broken uh, engagement is better than a broken marriage. So the abuser may use a variety of tactics to gaslight a victim, such as number one, denying or contradicting the victim's experiences. You have gone through something, you have grown, you, you, you have gone through a certain phase or experience in your life, but your partner uh, contradicts whatever it is that you're saying that you went through. They make you look like you're lying. Something else is that they trivialize or minimize the victim's feelings. Whatever you feel, they do not uphold your feelings. I believe that Kilamtu na kwanga na feelings zake. And your feelings are valid. Your feelings are very valid. But you find that this person who is gaslighting, they trivialize. Ni kama anakanyagia chini what you feel. Even if you tell them I'm feeling pain, I'm feeling hurt, they do not consider you. It's like you don't matter. And to them, they are the only ones who matter. Something else is shifting the blame onto the victim. Like uh, something happens, there's a mistake, or you quarrel, or you break up, and then to them, they are always right. But you, you're always the problem. You're always the one who is on the wrong. But they're the ones who 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 are making you feel like you're on the wrong. They're blaming you for everything. Whether you're late, they're blaming you. Uh, it is never their fault. If uh, maybe something is not paid on time, it is your fault. That is a form of gaslighting, and it is not good. And then they openly label you as crazy or paranoid. You complain about something, they tell you that you're being paranoid or you're being crazy. So uh, there's a big problem there. Uh, isolating the victim from their friends and family. When someone is gaslighting you, and I have spent a little bit of time here because this is very important, they do not want you to continue interacting with your friends. Wanakwambia, your friends, wanakutupisha mbao and all that, they want to isolate you from your family as well. So you, when you're dating and then someone is, is, is isolating you from your family, that means they don't have good intentions. Because where I'm coming from is someone who loves you, someone who wants to marry you, they do not want to isolate you from your family. If anything, they want to become part of your family and they want you to become part of their family. So if there's isolation somewhere that you stopped even going for family meetings and all that, uh, there's a big problem. And that's a big 
uh, red light that you need to be cautious about. Red flag number nine is neglecting future planning and unrealistic expectations. Remember, the reason you want to get married to this person is because you see yourself having a future together with this person. You see yourself having a future together with this person. So if every time when you meet, you just talk about petty things, you never discuss future together. You never discuss your the two of you Okay, he or she, okay, your partner is not interested in your future and you're also not interested in their future. There's a problem. You cannot be meeting and then everything you talk about is about today and now. And closely connected to that is unrealistic expectations. Like your expectations for marriage are very unrealistic. So what I'm saying is both partners should actively engage in discussions about their shared future. So if uh, if you have plans, maybe you want to set up a business or to seek promotion to further education, that kind of a thing. Where will you want to live? Where will you want your children to go to school? You know, that is future planning. And if you can't discuss that now, then there's a problem. There's a problem. So even for the, even those who are married, you need to have to discuss about the future together as a family and do not have unrealistic expectations. Do not have unrealistic expectations because unrealistic expectations are going to damage you. Uh, so believing in a perfect trouble-free marriage is unrealistic and can lead to, to, to disappointment. What I'm saying is no marriage is perfect. No marriage is perfect, Kabisa. But you do not, you, you, you cannot create that image in your head that the person who is marrying you, he is Mr. Save the World, or she is Mrs. Save the World, that she's going to be perfect and you're going to have a trouble-free marriage. So that is having an unrealistic expectation. So come down, come back to earth and have very realistic expectations. Red flag number 10 is something that I have called loneliness, loneliness. And there's a difference between loneliness and being alone. So, Loneliness is feeling isolated within the relationship. This is a sign of potential uh, trouble. So when you're feeling isolated in the relationship, this is a sign of potential trouble. And uh, what am I saying here? I don't know whether you have ever felt, If you, in, in case you have ever felt, you can leave a comment. I don't know whether you have ever felt uh, like you're in a crowd, probably in a crowd, but some way, somehow you feel lonely. Mm -hmm. You could also be uh with uh, okay alone you are alone but you're not feeling lonely so let me uh, dig deeper into that loneliness if uh, you're dating someone and uh, okay and and by the way let's differentiate between loneliness and being alone there are people who when they are alone they are okay especially depending on your temperament type we have people who are introverts who are people who are phlegmatics especially they like their alone time. And them being alone does not mean that they are lonely. They can spend so many hours together and they love that. Anyway, we are going to be talking more about temperaments and uh, uh, in the main course uh, that I will be talking about later. But for today's uh, episode, loneliness is you are with your partner together, but you're feeling lonely. I don't know whether... I don't know how to explain that better, but it is something that, as in, you do not feel that company. You know, you could be with someone, you're not talking, but you're not feeling lonely. Someone could be, you could be apart from each other. One person is working at point A, the other person is working at point K or point M, but you don't feel lonely. Why? Because you communicate even in the course of the day, and that makes you feel that you're together. But in this case, what I'm talking about is you're not even physically apart. You're together, but somewhere, somehow, you feel disconnected inside. You feel disconnected, and that is a very big indicator, and that is a very big sign that... Um, Something is not right. Something is amiss. So, and then something else that I would want to highlight at this point. This point, I kindly, I sneaked it in. Uh, there's a, I don't know what to call it, not a syndrome per se, but we have people who grew up as the only child in their families versus we have people who grew up in big families. This is not about loneliness per se, but I just wanted to, to sneak it in. Uh, people who grew up as an only child will relate differently from people who grew up in big families. People who grew up as an only child, they were used to their own space and they are used to being alone. But people who grew up in big families, they don't understand being alone. And they they, they have learned to fight for, for everything. Even for a piece of ugali on the table, they have learned to fight and scramble for it. Whereby people who grew up as an only child, they, they, they know that everything belongs to them and there's no need even to shout or to scream. So what am I saying here? If In, in case you're dating someone who grew up as an only child and you're coming from a family of a big family, then you will need to adjust something. You will need to adjust something. 
and 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 the best thing that you can uh, adjust is your mindset the best thing that you can adjust is your mindset uh, so uh, let us note that it is not a bad thing for someone to grow up as an only child but just understand the dynamics that that um, that go along and uh, you can make someone uh, feel more more what now you can like um okay just blend in because marriage is about complementing each other not competing so uh when someone is 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 wants to be wants some alone time that is okay but loneliness is different from being alone that's what i'm trying to highlight i'll being being lonely is is dangerous so if you can feel lonely and you're dating that's a big red flag so something else is believing your partner can fix you. One of the biggest mistakes that people make uh, in getting married is uh, getting into a relationship and then you think that your partner is going to fix your problems, that your partner is going to be a Mr. Fix-It or a Mrs. Fix-It. As in, you have your own issues that you're going through, but you have not dealt with them. You're getting into a relationship with baggages that you have not dealt with and you believe that your partner can help you fix those problems. That is a big red uh, red flag. Remember, uh, marriage should not be seen as a solution to personal issues or as a way to change your partner. I usually say this, uh, though sometimes it sounds rude, that if you cannot love me as I am, then leave me. So what am I saying here? If you cannot love your partner as they are, then leave them. Of course, there's room for change, there's room for growth, there's room for improvement, but work on the now. And then do not get married in case you're having some childhood wounds, especially many people do not work on their childhood wounds. Many people probably were injured uh, through the way they were parented, through the way they grew up, maybe even they are in their schooling and all that. So when they're getting into a marriage relationship, they have not dealt with their past, they have not dealt with that. And then they want their partner to come and fix them. Okay, if you get someone who can fix you, fine. But many people don't know how to fix a grown-up person. So in, in don't, don't get into the marriage hoping someone is going to fix you. Get into a relationship knowing that you need to fit, to work on yourself first because uh, we say that marriage is hard work. Marriage is work and it works to those who work on it. So the first person that you need to work on when you're getting into that marriage space is work on yourself. So that is a big red flag. If um, uh, that is a big red flag, expecting your partner to fix you. I hope this is making sense. Uh, red flag number 12 is uh, sexual purity. Uh, sexual purity. If someone cannot uh, respect your boundaries when it comes to this area of sexuality, then that is a big red flag. It cannot be that uh, someone, you're dating someone and all they're talking about, all they're thinking about is this. This is not the only thing that marriage is all about. There is more to marriage than having sex. So uh, if this is the only thing, that is a red flag. If all the texts you get are sex chats, that is a big red, red flag. If someone cannot ask you about your future, someone cannot ask you about your dreams, someone cannot ask you about your vision, this is the only thing they talk about, that is a big red flag because it is not the only thing in marriage. Uh, we have uh, a minute to go now. Uh, uh, so I think uh, I will just uh, mention this. This is parents' relationships. The way your partner views your parents is very important. How your partner views their parents' relationship can affect their own relationship. If your partner uh, maybe talks bad about the mother or about the father, chances are he or she will also talk very badly about you. If parents' relationship, how your spouse views their parents is very important and it is very key. Uh, some people may underplay this, but I think it is crucial uh if your person if your spouse uh downplays or talks ill oh, about your yeah. about uh their parents that means they would also talk bad about you and the way you know sometimes you you get to read a person's mind through what they are speaking in communication last session we said that when a person communicates they are also revealing something about themselves so if for, for example your spouse keeps saying about any anaongea to buy a mama yake and you are the wife chances are hata wewe hautakuwa mzuri kwake chances are hata wewe so and uh, that is very uh, very important for us to note uh, and then something else is about selfishness this is red flag number 14 kama mtu ni mchoyo kama mtu ni mchoyo selfishness is uh, something else kama mtu ni mchoyo atakuwa mchoyo even during marriage so a self centered partner may not be prepared for the selflessness that is required in marriage remember marriage is about being 
uh, it's about giving. Marriage is about being unselfish. So if someone is selfish, probably what they're saying is they do not have enough space in them uh, to give. They do not have enough space in them to love back. So uh, if someone is selfish, that is another red flag. If you're here and you're listening and you're selfish and your partner keeps telling you that you're selfish, this is something you can work on. Remember, most of these red flags, they are not at the things that uh, you cannot work on. Most of them are things that when you learn about them, you can improve on your relationship. So in case, uh, as I speak, in case you're seeing yourself somewhere, just work on something, especially something like selfishness. That is something that you can and work on and uh, things are going to get better. Number 15 is um, warnings from others. Warnings from others. If the people who know your person, if the people who know the person you're dating are warning you about that person, chances are there could be a reason, a valid reason that they are seeing that you need to check and that you need to, to work on. So if people who know your partner will express concerns, take heed. Unajua watu wengi upenda kusema ti, ah, da watu wananionea wivu and all that. Uh, I know sometimes you can fight against that and, and the relationship can work well, but chances are, especially your close friends, I believe that every person, it is not possible for you to have 10 friends and you're a normal human being, probably only have very good friends uh, that you have are probably three or four or even two or just one maybe. And if your two good friends are raising eyebrows about your relationship, this is when you're not in the dating, okay, when you're still in the dating phase, kindly take a step back and investigate. Take a step back and investigate. So be cautious and aware of the signs. Uh, being cautious and aware of the signs can help you make informed decisions in both dating and marriage. Remember, we have said that marriage is about making informed decisions. And especially if you're in that phase whereby it is in the dating phase, you need to make an informed decision. And people who know the person you're dating can help you make an informed decision. And I usually tell people that when, uh, especially those who are starting to date, don't date someone in private. Don't date someone someone when you just meet the two of you date people in public meet people in public meet people where there are other people and see how this person behaves where other people are and uh, on a light note i also say that um if you really want to know the true character of a person, who they really are and how they will behave even towards you sometimes is look at them, how they behave, especially when they meet a dog, a stray dog on the road or a cat. If they treat it so badly, they don't have kindness. I think you need to be cautious and to start seeing some uh, some red signs. So how do you deal with red flags in relationships? Very important. Number one is you need to take time to objectively assess the situation and ask for a timeout. Uh, objectively assess the situation and ask for a timeout. Uh, that is important. There's nothing wrong in asking for a timeout in a relationship. If you're not comfortable about something, kindly ask for a timeout. Uh, something else is communicate your concerns with your partner and gauge your willingness to address the okay and gauge the, their willingness to address those issues. Remember, I have said that red flags are things that people can work on. Red flags are people that are things that people can improve. So. Uh, if the person is willing to improve, that is okay. If they're not willing to work on that particular red flag, then if you agree and move on, then know that that particular issue can live to, to torment you in the future. Or it will grow bigger. If they have an issue probably with gambling now and you're raising that concern uh, and they're not doing anything about it, what makes you think when you get married, they will stop gambling? Remember I said you do not have the powers to change any man. Only God and the Holy Spirit can change someone. So do not take the role of the Holy Spirit. If they change, that is God's work. But do not take that burden upon yourself and say, and I hear people saying this a lot, ah, what I mean, muo, ni mtukwesa izi, ni tenda kumuashea uko mbele. Yes, it's fine, that can happen. But if there are red flags and you're not comfortable about them, take a step back. Take a step back. It is okay to take a step back and allow and see how this person is working. If the person is interested in you, they will show interest in them. Uh, okay, they will show interest as they work on their weaknesses, as they work on the red flags. Something else is make a well-informed decision, prioritizing your peace of mind and happiness. Remember, you're important. Remember, your happiness is important. And remember last time we said, do not get married expecting the other person to make you happy. No. It, they may not make you happy. 
get married because you, you are happy yourself. So uh, remember your happiness is important. Your peace of mind is important. Your destiny is important. Your direction in life is important. Everything is not about marriage per se. So if, if, if your destiny is being questioned or being threatened, that is a red flag. Know that you need, okay, as in give yourself happiness. And I remember saying, So uh, happiness, jipe mwenyewe. Do not, uh, and, and if your happiness is being affected now and you're dating, you're always gloomy, you're always bitter, you're always sad. What makes you think five years down the line you're going to be happier? What's a happiness you talking about, Niyako? And if happiness is being threatened, then that is a big red flag. Something else is you can seek professional guidance or support from friends and family if necessary. Remember, I have said that uh, people have weaknesses and weaknesses can be worked on. But do not take the, the sole role of trying to change someone. But you can seek counseling. I know counseling helps. You can seek counsel even from friends, from close people who are close to you uh, to help you... Uh, Try to settle something that is, that is happening. Uh, so seek professional help that is allowed. Even to those who are married and probably there's something that you're struggling with. There's a red flag that has been problematic all years. Yes, you saw it in the beginning. You ignored it, but it is eating you up. I'm not saying that you leave the marriage, but I am saying that you can seek help. We, we, we have cases of people who have gone through therapy, people have gone through counseling, and they have been able to work out their things. The most important thing is, is your partner willing to be helped? Just as they say in uh, Alcoholic Anonymous that uh, for you to be helped, first of all, you must admit that I am an alcoholic and then you're going to be helped. It is very difficult for you to go to therapy if your partner does not, first of all, understand and accept that they have a problem. So if your partner accepts they have a problem and they are willing to work through their problem to get a solution, kindly seek help. Do not be ashamed or embarrassed to seek help. We all survive because we have sought help. It could be through professional help or even through our friends and some of us we have benefited a lot from from being advised by friends from being told abc you go to church you go to a seminar you go to visit a friend and uh in that informal setup you get help that is very important if that is what is going to help you kindly pursue it and um as we conclude, recognize and address these warning signs before marriage is crucial. Recognizing and addressing these warning signs before marriage is crucial. If there are any red flags, if there are any concerns that you can see, kindly address them before marriage. You should not commit to someone. You should not commit to someone if you cannot tolerate or resolve these red flags. If there is something you cannot uh, live with, if there is something you cannot tolerate, that is a big red flag. Don't force yourself. Don't probably wondering what am I teaching today? I'm simply saying a broken engagement is better and less painful than a broken marriage. So uh, take heed of the red flags. If you can work on something, work on it. If you cannot tolerate something, don't force yourself. Do not force yourself at all. Um, so your future happiness and well-being uh, should be the guiding principle in your decision-making process. So even as you decide whether to get married to this person or not, consider your future happiness. Are you happy? Is this person making you feel happy? Is this person interested in your future? Is this person interested in making you grow as well? Or is this person treating you as a slave? Is this person manipulating you? Is this person just downgrading you all the time and gaslighting you? So remember, do not, uh, I cannot overemphasize this enough. Happiness, jipe mwenyewe. Your partner can do things that can make you happy, yes, but you do not spend 24 hours with your partner. Most people spend maybe just a few hours in the evening and in the morning. The rest of the day, you're not with your partner. So if if, if your partner, even when you're away, they make you sad all the time because of the texts and the messages and the phone calls they are, they are bringing you away. They don't even make you smile. And you're in the dating phase. That is a big problem that 